sin. And I tell you today, church, that we're in the last days, we're in the last time. I don't know how long the Lord will carry this time, but sin is still our problem. And we still have people that get mad because we preach against sin. We still have people that get puffed up. We even have preachers that don't like to preach again. We have preachers that get mad. I mean, I mean that you go. Oh. It's still the problem. Amen. If you're lying, stop it. Amen. If you're stealing, stop it. Amen. If there's hatred in your heart, replace it with the love of God. How can you yes. do that? Because of the blood of Jesus. Yes. And that's the only way. <clears throat> there's peace through the blood. The world's looking for peace. There's peace in the blood of Jesus. How many of you want peace? Yes. yes. That's why the world is self-medicating themselves. They're looking for peace. I, I posted this week a, a video and it breaks my heart. It was in Philadelphia, but it's a truth that is around the world. And so many people on heroin and 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 all kinds of drugs. And they, they video going down to Kensington Street in Philadelphia. And there's hundreds of people that are just standing there. I'm not talking about 10. I'm talking about numerous people. You know what? They're on they're on they're on heroin. You know what they've done is they're trying to eliminate the pain. You say, Pastor, they, that's in Philadelphia. No, it's in Fort Payne. Uh -huh. Don't you think for a minute that it's not? Amen. And we got people in the church doing similar things, trying to medicate their lives and trying to medicate their brains and trying to find some kind of peace. And all the time, the peace is in the blood of Jesus. Amen. That's why I, I, it's so frustrating in ministry when you see people and you tell people and you teach people. And, and yet they're sneaking around doing, doing these things again. And, you know, it gets to the point that you just, I, you don't understand. You cannot get your head wrapped around. <clears throat> and the truth is, we cannot convince people. The truth, the hard truth comes down to this. I can preach my heart out, beg people to come to an altar, beg people to surrender to God. It takes the Holy Spirit. That's why we gotta be a, that's why the Spirit's got to be. It takes the Holy Ghost to get a hold of people. Yes, sir. I was in a service, in a funeral service yesterday as I was telling you. And at the end of that service, there was a, a preacher got up and he preached some of the hardest preaching I'd ever heard. I, I, I kid you not, my wife will tell you. I've never heard that kind of preaching at a funeral. The Holy Spirit touched me. Something outside of me, something divine got a hold of me. And all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost is dealing with me. Folks, we've got to have a move of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. We've got to go back to where preaching and teaching and worship is such that it brings conviction. Yes. We have been guilty of softening it up yes. and whitewashing it down to where it no longer has an impact. Yes, you've got to be careful. Yes, you've got to uh, be a... You know, yes, you've got to speak truth. Amen. And you got to do it in love. Yes. Amen. I, I don't like to see somebody get in the flesh. You can do more damage in a minute than you can fix in a decade. If you get in the flesh. Now, you might not know what I'm talking about, but I've seen preachers get mad and call it the anointing. You say, well, Pastor, how do we get it right? Well, we, we're careful. And we pray and we fast and we see God and we tell people the truth. That's why I'm telling you here today. Listen, if there's sin in your life, you need to repent. Amen. If there's sin in your life, God's mercy is everlasting. His grace is sufficient. And, and he's got, He has shed His precious blood, that perfect blood. He's made everything available. Everything you need is available that you have to believe. You and I have to receive the peace that comes through the blood of Jesus. We have to go back in our minds and in our, in 
in our sin. We have to go back and, and, and realize what he did on the cross. And we receive that peace. And I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit will get involved. Yes. And he'll give you peace. Yes. You know, the Lord's given me peace about the future. I said, God's given me peace about the future. We got people all over the world all tore up. What are we going to do? What are you going to do, Pastor? Half the church is not here this morning. You know, I told my wife yesterday, and I mean this from my heart, I don't care how many people care. I'm just going to obey God. Amen. I'm just going to obey God. I'm not going to worry about who's not here. I'm not going to take names. I, I can't. Listen, it's, it's the Lord doing the work. A lot of people are sick, and we can go through There's a We've got a great church. You yeah. Don't hear me wrong, but I'm saying that we've got a great church of people that love God, and they love each other, which a lot of, a lot of churches can't say. I'm so thankful for our church. But it's the Holy Spirit. Why? Because it's just church. Through the blood we're reconciled to Christ. Whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace, having made peace through the blood of his cross. You gotta go to the cross of Calvary and understand what he did. So how long has it been since you've been to the cross? Through the blood we have purging, which is cleansing. <laughs> Hebrews 9, 14, how much more shall the blood of Christ and through the eternal spirit offer himself without spot to God? Cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. I love this verse because it just kind of describes what we want to do as Christians. It just describes how many of you want to do this. How many of you want to through the eternal spirit, how many of you want to be a believer without spot Cleanse your conscience from dead works and to serve the living God. I don't want to be a spot. Jude talked about spots. He said there are spots in your, in your church, paraphrasing, there are spots in your feast of charity and your fellowship, feeding themselves without fear. They're mocking God and mocking you. These are spots. These are unbelievers. And the Bible says for us to separate ourselves I don't want to be a spot. Well, because of the blood of Jesus, I don't have to be. Because of the blood of Jesus. We're sanctified by his blood. We are forgiven by his blood. We are healed by his blood. 1 Peter 2 and 24 bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. I got to stop yeah. right here. Because this is not just about physical healing. When really, when it says by stripes we're healed, it, the, the, it, what it really is saying is by stripes we are delivered. Yes. This is the, the Greek. Folks, it's not just about physical healing. I want to say something about physical healing because we hear a lot about it in the, in the church. We hear a lot about it sometimes. And I'm all for praying for healing. I believe God for healing. I've been healed by God. Mm -hmm. I know what it is. Divine healing. But I want to tell you something. We got people praying for healing that have never been saved. It's not that God can't do it. No. And, and you know what? I'm glad they're praying. But I want to tell you that if you're praying about this, this, and this, but you're not praying about this, you're missing the mark. You've got to claim the blood of Jesus. There needs to be a change in your life. Yes. Yes, the only change that will work is the blood of Jesus. Right. Apply we can be healed by the blood. We can be transformed by the blood. We are delivered by the blood. There, I am not. I am not worried about what's happening in this world. I'm here to tell you that my home is in heaven. I'm going to have to endure some things, and that's fine. The Lord gives us the power to endure. He yes. gives us the peace and the, the Holy Spirit to lead us and to protect us. And, and I know that it rains on the just and the unjust. And I know that there's no telling what we might go through. But I'm just here to tell you, I'm not the least bit worried about it because heaven's my home. Yeah. I've already got citizenship. Yeah. I, woo, I've already got paperwork. Yeah. I've already got paperwork that says I am a child of God yeah. and that I'm a citizen of heaven. Yeah. I've got dual citizenship. Yeah. I'm in. Forgiveness is 
serious business. Yes, it is. I had a man ask him one time, what kind of God would require, I mean, he, he, he's an unbeliever. What kind of God requires forgiveness? A holy God. Amen. A just God. Amen. A God who is God alone. He is exclusively God. He is holy and he is righteous. And we should never forget that we need forgiveness of sin. And that's through the blood of Jesus. 1 Peter 2 and 24. Isaiah 1 18. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. We are justified by his blood. I saw a little clip of a video and I shared it this week because I wanted people to, to see it. It was a preacher. I don't even know where the preacher was, but it was in some kind of convention. He had preachers all around him. I, I know a preacher when I say preacher. He had preachers all around him. And he was talking about that. He was talking about that thief on the side of Jesus. And he said that thief died and went to heaven and he said, you know, they, they said, who are, who, who are, how did you get here? And he said, well, I don't know. He said, uh, I, he said, did, do you know, do you understand justification? Uh, no. Do you, uh, have you been baptized in water? Well, no. I, I, all I know is the man on the middle cross <laughs> told me I could come. <laughs> he said, all I know is that man on that middle cross said I could come to paradise. And evidently, I'm here. Yeah. Folks, I'm here to tell you that's because of the blood yeah. of that one. You and I can go to paradise. We can be in paradise with the Lord, absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. We're sanctified. I believe there's some sanctification we need to do ourselves. I believe sometimes we need to go back to the closet and get a broom and just sweep. Amen? Amen. And that's scriptural. There, there is sanctification that you and I need to do ourselves. But I'm going to tell you, our work of sanctification is so little. It's our part to try to keep the house clean. Try to keep our minds clean. By the way, you're going to see more accidentally in 22 than you saw on purpose 20 years ago. The men of this house understand what I'm talking about. When visually stimulated men have to close their eyes in public, close their eyes many times when something pops up on the TV screen or on the computer screen before you even know it. Don't you think the devil don't know what he's doing? He's, he's, he's working. But I'm here to tell you, you can get the broom and clean the house. Amen. I mean, there's some things I wish I hadn't seen. Sure. Amen. Yes, sir. I said there are some things I wish I hadn't saw. Right. But you know what I found out about the Holy Spirit is that He'll remove it from your memory. Yes. Oh yeah. Yes. You say, well, Pastor, mine's not been removed. You just keep praying, keep believing. Because right. I'll tell you what it does. There's some software you buy to clean your computer. I don't know exactly what it's called. I don't know a lot about it. But they tell me that there's programs you can buy to sweep your hard drive. Sometimes I need my hard drive swept. Yes. Yes. From all the frustration and the anger yes. and the, the bitterness. One of the I've struggled with in my life is resentment. You better get it out of there. You, 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 you can contaminate it. You'll be, I'm telling you that that's what viruses do on a computer, and that's what sin does in your heart. Yes, and it takes the blood of Jesus. Yes. Well, Pastor, I ain't got no blood of Jesus. Well, you do. Yeah. You got some good news. Yeah. It's, when, it's when in your mind, because it's a belief, you go back in the Word to the cross, and you read, and you listen, and you protect in what Jesus did on the cross. And as you do that, you remember that that wasn't just blood. Mm -hmm. That was perfect blood. 
perfect Lord. Yes. Yes. And so we're sanctified by his blood. We're redeemed by his blood. We are bought by his blood. Amen. I hope today that you've been bought. I hope today yes. that you haven't just made a religious decision to do that. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I've, I've seen do better. I've seen do better my whole life in the church of God. I've seen them go to the altar, cry big old tears. I, I, I can take you to, in my memory because the Holy Spirit was showing me, see, as I grew up and a young preacher, I, I remember things and people grow up and they get a blessing and they'd shout. It's back in sin the next day. Amen. Back in sin the next week. I'm not, I'm not, con I'm not condemning them. If there's, con if there's condemnation, it's not me doing it. They're condemned by their own sin. Yeah. I'm just here to tell you that you got to go to Calvary. Yeah. And you have to understand the power yes. of the blood of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. And what it did in his way. Yeah. Now, he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son who said, believe in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. He, he, he gave that blood for the whole world. There are people today that are teaching that the whole world is saved. We just don't know it. Well, that's not what the Bible says. Yeah. Um, the Bible teaches us quite different. That we're saved by the blood of Jesus. And we have to confess our sins and we have to ask forgiveness of our sins. Yes. It's called a new birth. Right. It's so literal that it's, it, it's, it's compared to a new birth. And if you're a mother, if you're a father, if, if, uh, if you're, as a child, you won't remember. But as a parent, you remember this thing called birth. Mm -hmm. I'm here to tell you a new birth is a real experience. Mm -hmm. And we got folks that have never been born again. We got folks that have never put their trust in the blood of Jesus. But I want to tell you this. If you're here today and you have put your trust in the blood of Jesus, that ought to be the motivation to live a life that's holy and acceptable unto God. I'm not Sister Rhonda. I come here today and I am just so absolutely grateful for the blood of Jesus. He said, Pastor, he went to the cross. And listen, he didn't have to. He shed that perfect blood and he didn't have to. He made a way where there was no way. I said, he made a way where there was no way. He said, I am the way the truth and the life. This is not about what denomination you're in and what group you're in and what political party you're in. And I, I, believe, I believe that, you know, walking in truth is important. But this, this is about knowing Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And you'll never know him as Lord until you know him as Savior. That's the problem, Brother Melvin, is we got, hope, we got people that have never known him as Savior. They're not born again. They've, they've, they've had an emotional experience. They've had to do better. They've turned over a new leaf. But they've never been to Calvary and realized what Jesus actually did for them. But like I said, if you're here today and you have accepted Christ, you're here today and you do know him and the pardon of sin. You do know him because he, he's forgiven you. You've been to Calvary and you understand that. The fact is, it's something you think about every day. Did you want to say We need to think about it every day. That's one of our problems, guys, is that some people are so distracted that they forget about the blood. If you spend the rest of your life focused on that precious blood, you'll be all right. Because I'm going to tell you, I didn't have a chance about it. But Jesus, when he went away, he told his disciples, he said, I'm going to give you this ordinance. I'm going to give you this procedure. And he said, I want you to do this in remembrance of me. Yes. In remembrance of my blood. In remembrance of what I did on the cross. We're going to do that today. We're going to take communion. Before we do, I want to, want to share with you what the Word of God says. You should never take communion without examining your life. And I believe this is very important. The fact is, I'm more convinced and convicted over it now than I've ever been in my ministry. I can't prevent somebody from taking communion with sin in their life that is unrepentant. I can't prevent that. But 
but I would strongly, I would strongly advise against it. Because the Word of God tells us, the Word of God teaches us that that's why there are some sick among you. As I prayed about this this week, the Lord kept telling me in his, his own special way. We, me and him, you know, you might not, but we got, we got this communication thing. I, I don't like to be any more special. You can have it too. Yeah. And I hope you do. But we were just talking about this. And he said, I'm going to heal Sunday morning when you take communion. I'm going to heal somebody. I'm going to heal somebody. As we put our faith in the blood, as we remember what Jesus did, something powerful is going to happen. But before we do that, we need to bow our heads and examine our hearts. Christian, if you're here today and there's sin in your life, I pray that God will reveal it to you right now. This is a moment, this is a time of examination. Oh God, examine my attitudes. Examine my behaviors. Examine all that I am and all that I present to me. For Lord, you are holy and you are the holy God of heaven. And Father, I pray that you would forgive sin, even as our brother has gotten up great this morning so humbly and so absolutely precious. And begin to pray aloud, Lord, forgive me. All over this house, I just want you to begin to pray right where you're at. I want you to take your time. He is faithful. Hear me, church. The Word of God, He is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins. Somebody here say, well, Pastor, I don't deserve. Well, none of us deserve this. It's called grace. It's called mercy. Father, all over this house, help us, Lord, to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. If there's anything in the lives of anyone here today, I pray, Lord, that you would give them the strength to cry out in repentance. A prayer that sounds simple. A prayer that is significant. That simply says, Lord, please forgive me of my sin. And give me the strength to turn from it and never do it again. I want the church to look at me just a minute. Do you understand the power of forgiveness? Do you understand that he will forgive you? Yes. And he will give you the strength to never do it. I, I just despise the doctrine that says you're going to sin every day. Don't misunderstand what I said earlier about struggling with sin. We all struggle with sin. But honey, you don't have to sin. I don't really know where that doctrine comes from. I'm here to tell you that if you walk in the light as he is, in the light. I'm just here today. You walk in the spirit. The Lord will help you. Yes, yes, yes. I feel like telling somebody, you didn't ever say a word. You don't ever say a word that you don't decide to say. Well, it just happened so fast. I just can't help it. I was just being myself. That's what we're testifying. Because you don't own yourself. You can't. No, you're no longer in control. The Holy Spirit will show you and He will guide you and He will help you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. If you want to take communion, I want you to, in front of you, in the seat in front of you, there's a communion set. Those that are on the front row, Brian, I need you to help me get communion sets to those on the front row over here. Ricky, would you help me make sure everybody on the front row has one? Just make sure that if you want to take communion, I want you to go ahead and put your hands on that. This, this, this song has a new meaning to me. Right now, as you're playing, it has a fresh new meaning to me. And I want us to sing. There's plenty. There's plenty. Do that. Is that the 
Lord, we receive, yes, the healing, the restoration, the work that only you can do, we receive it in this body. Not just this physical body, but in the body, your body. Lord, bring revival to the church. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Lord, let there be a revival of the cross. Because of what Jesus did, I want you to stand with me. Hallelujah. You're not working your way to heaven, but listen closely. God help you right now. Because of what Jesus did, you owe him. Yes, sir. You ought to live right because of what Jesus did. God didn't give his life and shed his blood on the cross so he could be a bunch of hateful racists. So we can be a bunch of haughty sinners. Hypocrites. No. I'm standing here today and I want to do right. I want to do right because he did right by me. Yes. Father, yes. give your people strength. Hallelujah. Give your people strength to be right. To walk in the peace. To walk in the highway. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Give him praise in this house. Give him love. You know, take my, take my grandsons to see my daddy. And they got used to power. You know, they have been around him a lot. And I say now, they give Papa some love. And he'll crew, he'll walk around. And I say, no, I want you to give him some love. And he'll jump up in his lap. That's what I want you to do today. Won't you walk around and act like that you might just appreciate it possibly? No, I want you to spend your day loving her. He so loved you that he gave his only the God yes. his son. I've asked the Lord in recent weeks trying to, try to preach on Revelation and haven't been able to do much. I finally said one day this week, I was praying, I said, Lord, what are you wanting to say to the church? Now, I'm sorry if this don't preach good. I'm sorry if it's not Red faced and slain and stopped and sweat. You know what he told me? He said, Tell him I love him. He said, Tell him I love him. You need to know that you live here today that God really does love you. His love is not diminished. He cares about what you're facing. I want you to be sure to get a vote. I want to see council members that are here. I'd like to see you for just a moment on the stage. I want you to be dismissed in the love of the Lord.